Great day, family. Thank you for tuning in to the Community Nonprofit Network Podcast, a.k.a. the CNN Podcast, where your nonprofit shines. Today is an awesome episode. Um, We have been lately, in our episodes, we have been speaking about internships in one way or another. And um, so it dawned on me, well, why don't you bring on the awesome interns that are working with Life Changers, uh, my nonprofit um, organization. So that's what we're going to do today. So please let me introduce Samantha Howard, a.k.a. Sam. Hi. And then we have Mackenzie Thorson. Hi. Then we have somewhat of a repeat guest because uh, Rashia is not new to you guys. Um, she is my ace moon coon volunteer, been with Life Changers, and, well, she's been with me since before Life Changers was a thing. Uh, Rashia Von Denenda. Hi, guys. So we're going to simply talk internship, all day internship. What do we do? Why do we do it? Who do we work with? And um, I thought it would be a pretty good idea to go from speaking with other nonprofit and community organizations about their internships and how we put them together and how they're set up to going to the other side of the aisle to the actual interns and the ones who manage uh, the internship program itself just to help you nonprofit founders and executive directors who are looking uh, to put together your own internship, you know, hopefully we inspired you to do something to get some help in. But like I always say, it, you have to focus on making it a win-win situation, whether they're interns, volunteers, or community service workers. So let's get into it. Um, so first, we're going to go to Sam. Sam, please explain to our listeners, first of all, why were you looking for an internship? For two, what were you looking to get out of the internship? And for three, what were you in school for? You don't have to do it in that order, but just cover those bases, please. Okay, let's see if I can remember all those questions. Um, <laughs> well, it started out for me like I just wanted to build my resume, honestly, and I didn't really think anything past that. I was like, this would be good. And Life Changer specifically um, reached me just because – I volunteered at a prison a while ago and I had the privilege of like getting to know some inmates and seeing what they go through um, and how they uh, plan to reintegrate their lives with the society outside of prison. So it really just like felt like something that I was somewhat familiar with and also could bring something to and learn more about. Um, now that I'm in the internship, I'm realizing how many skills I have accumulated like through it, even though my original reason for joining it was strictly for uh, my resume. But I think it has helped me a lot to like learn how to reach out to people that I don't know and like my community and be able to just learn how to find the people I need to find to talk to because it's actually a little more tricky than you think, like finding (laughs) the right people to, um, discuss things with and like get information from but I do think it helped it's helped with my like people skills a lot um I just graduated with my bachelor's from eastern Washington (laughs) I got my um bachelor's degree in psychology I got a minor in Spanish as well and now I am applying to grad schools I am looking to go into school psychology I'm hoping to work with teenagers who have like extra issues whether that means at home or like they just need extra attention for their mental health um but I do think like all areas of psychology are important so even though it's not uh life changers isn't the specific type of psychology I'm going into I think it's still uh very helpful to know about and um I think that that will help me just in my future career as well so yeah I'm eager to get started on my master's and even more eager to be done with it. Um, but yeah, so I am just in the process of like looking at different schools, trying to figure out where I want to end up. And yeah, this is just part of the process. So, okay. You touched on it. So let's go a little deeper. What okay. is your assignment? What had, what had, okay. First, let me, let me just put this out there. Life Changers, um, internship is lit internship program lit is our brand um life changers in training is what it stands for so um 
Lit Internship Program is a 10-week program with a minimum of 10 hours per week. And um, you're given various regular, I mean, we are regular business, so you're given regular business assignments. You are given assignments that um, need to be completed by someone, whether it's a volunteer, intern, or community service worker. So, Sam, what is the assignment you've been working on? I am in charge of getting the word out about our virtual employment skills workshop, which is free. Um, I am reaching out to different schools, high schools, colleges, finding the appropriate person to talk to, to give information to, and sharing that with them in hopes of getting a bigger uh, group of people to come to the employment workshop. Very good. And you're doing, and you are doing a great job. Oh, Name. Oh, no, no. Thank you. <laughs> Name three um, skills that you have picked up that you didn't have when you came to us. Or even if you didn't pick them up if you, if they're sharpened. I know you mentioned one. Yeah. Was, uh, what did you say a minute ago? Um, like people skills? Yeah, definitely. Like my communication skills. Um, cause I mean, I, I'm not bad at talking to people, but transitioning like into being an adult, it's a different type of communication. <laughs> but in the work world, you know, versus just like being able to talk to people on a personal level. So I'm definitely learning like, um, I guess more professionalism. Um, and also, great, great. Yeah. 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 It's great. And I think it'll make it an easier transition when I am like in the work world. Um, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, that's the point. That's mm-hmm. definitely the point. <laughs> that, mm-hmm. that's just make it to an adult. Yeah. <laughs> that's also, too funny. Probably just like attention to detail because I mean, I'm on all of these web pages, college pages, high school pages looking for, the person to talk to. And it's honestly in places that I never would look like I, I would never know where to look. So it's honestly taught me just like how to be, pay more attention to detail and be more thorough, I guess. And I I think that would be pretty awesome uh, and useful in, especially when you're working with kids, right? Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Probably also time management. I've, I wouldn't say I was bad at it before, but I do think it has sharpened that skill for me Um, just because like I we have 10 hours a week and we're required to do 10 hours a week. But at the same time, I want to make sure that I am getting as much in those hours as I can, you know, to make uh, the biggest change I can, I guess, or the be the most helpful I can in my assignment. So, yeah, it's just helped me to, I guess, like stay focused on what I need to be doing and yeah I'm glad to hear about the time management Sam because I know when you came to us you Mm -hmm. were working and still in school and took this on so that was that was a lot and yes I was going to mention congratulations uh that Sam graduated with her bachelor's and is uh decided not to take that time off thank you so much (laughs) I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm not taking time off. I I'm glad me and your dad confused you on that one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> awesome. All righty, next we have Mackenzie Thorson, who also has a plate full uh, and is still in school. So take it away, Mackenzie. Please share with our listeners why, because you actually were the one who came to Life Changers first and referred Sam to us. So what even drew you to us? What drew you to an internship period? And what were your expectations? And what is your goal for after? So the funny thing is, is I was not looking for an internship. Um, I found you guys through LinkedIn, and I was looking to volunteer. And you are the one who, um, Erica's the one who told me that, since I'm in college, it could actually be um, an internship that would look good on my resume and all the things because I was looking to volunteer in something similar to this. And that's when I when she told me about the internship, I, was, I decided that was a great idea for what I'm currently going for. Um, so it wasn't the internship that I was looking. I wasn't looking to get anything out of it. But now it's just a bonus um, because I was coming here to because they also do like life changers offers. Um Things for volunteers, for interns, and then, like you said, uh, for service hours as well. Um, for me, I'm graduating in April with um, a bachelor's degree in psychology and a minor in criminal justice. Yay. Um, so life changers definitely um, 
goes right into my interested field. Um, and also one of the biggest things um, is being a single mom. It was nice finding something that I can kind of have for myself, if that makes sense. So um, being able to volunteer or do an internship um, to like kind of get my goals started um, because as all the other parents know, like when you have kids, you put them first. And so you, the things that you want to do with your life, um, kind of fall behind a little bit. And so now that I'm back on, yep. So now that I'm back on track, um, I am able, like I found you guys. And so that definitely helps. Um, but also like something that I've learned with this internship is honestly about the topic. Like I didn't know much about like prison reform or anything before I started working or I guess volunteering or interning here. Um, so that was kind of cool to learn something more like oh, that has to do in regards to criminal justice. Um, but it's just kind of a different side to it. Um, because they don't teach that very much in, in colleges. They don't teach the, the other side of it. They teach the criminal justice, like the laws and the stuff like that, but they don't teach about what to do when you're just getting out of prison and how hard it is to kind of integrate back into society. So that was cool to be able to learn about that side of it and, um, so me personally, I, since this is a nonprofit, I kind of go and find, um, like community grants to, um, help with, put on these workshops and put on these things that we can offer to people and resources and stuff like that. So, um, with that, I'm the one contacting like the, the big companies, like trying to apply for the community grants in hopes to kind of get some funding through that way. Um, so that's I go through all the applications and I'm the one who signs all those up. Um, when I first started, I was doing like the blog side of Life Changers. So on our website, we have um, a tab where you can go read our blogs and each week we talk about something different. Um, so at first, when I was started, I mentioned or I was editing and posting all of those. Um, and then my assignment changed um, after a few weeks to doing blog posts and um, overall, it's been a great experience, and I think that it is going to build my resume up. And I do want to go in the fall to get my master's in forensic science or forensic psychology. Um, and so I like being able to find, like, the psychology side of of the criminal justice, if that makes sense. Um, like, the intersection between psychology and criminal justice is really interesting. So that's kind of what I like to say that I bring to life changers, even though it's kind of already here, but I'm saying like the psychology side of it is very interesting to me. So it's nice being able to volunteer and intern with something that has um, to do with my field that I want to go into. Well, it, it there is a lot to do with uh, psychology and criminology mm-hmm. and criminal justice. And, you know, Sam, you're going to learn. <laughs> Unfortunately, they look at um, last I knew anyway. Um, last I heard, they look at fourth grade boys to know how many prisons they're going to need, which is almost really it. It it tick you off, and you know I'm I'm going to make sure, I'm going to remember that I am a saved person over here. Um, but <laughs> yeah, when I when I first heard that, and that's why I say maybe they use fifth grade now. I don't know, but I know for the longest it was fourth grade was the study that they carried out every year. To see uh, how many boys, you know, what what the algorithm, you know, the formula, or whatever, I don't know. Um, but I know they look at black and brown boys. They look at uh, behavioral, uh, you know, behavioral issues and so forth and so on. I used to volunteer years ago um, when my son was in third grade, so 25 years ago, and um, it was through Georgia Department of Human Resources (DHR). And it was the FAST program, Families and Schools Together, which was for um, behavior issue kids. And um, you, I got referred to it because my son was a behavior issue. And um, But it was such a great um, program that I said, well, I want to volunteer. I was a parent liaison. And I see why DHR focused on second, third, and fourth grade because those are some formative years that you really got to buckle down on, you know, these kids' behaviors. They're influenced by TV and, you know, what they see out in the neighborhood, what they see in their household. So it's it'll be interesting, Sam, to hear from you in about 10, 15 years of, oh, my gosh, these kids, you know, I see why they wind up 
<laughs> in your program. <laughs> so, you know, that's interesting. It is, but um, you are a game changer. You are a change agent. You're a change agent. So to make that your goal and when you're working on your masters and hopefully you'll be able to finagle that. So um next uh we have Rashia. Rashia is our kind of like our den mother for the internship program. She manages everything. Um I hand out the assignments to our interns and Rashia follows up. Rashia handles Everything. I'll let her tell you what she does. So, uh, Rashia, um, please explain what what makes for a successful um, internship program that creates a win win. Um, so you get feedback like we're hearing now, um, like we hear during our weekly meetings, like we hear during you know all throughout and even afterward. So take it away, please. Okay. So um, first off. Um, I'm not only just, you know, the dead mother for the interns. I also do everything communications with yes. life changers. So, um, just about any and everybody who comes through life changers in some sort of way, I'm involved. Um, okay. but, um, with the interns, especially any questions that they have, any concerns, um, every meeting that they have, it's one of those things that it's not imperative, but it's very important that I'm there to hear the things that they're saying, to hear the things that they're feeling about everything. And like Erica says, you know, the um, getting that feedback for us is very important. So for me, when I hear the feedback, we can, you know, talk about adjusting what we need to adjust as far as should there be more meetings, should there be more involvement on our end, are we not explaining things the way that we need to explain them, um, are there other resources or other things that we could be looking for to be able to help these young folks as far as their internship goes. Um, a lot of the people who come to us to do internships are in school. And so, like Mackenzie and Sam said, you know, they're, um, it's not always something that is required. It's something that, you know, maybe they just want to do for it to look good, you know, on their resume or what have you. But um, it's just one of those things where, you know, they come to us with the expectation of this is what I want to do. This is. This is, you know, something that I want to pursue. And it's not like, okay, well, I'm volunteering just, you know, out of the goodness of my heart all the time. But sometimes it is, like in this case. And um, basically, you know, hearing their feedback gives us the ability to know that either we're doing something good or, like, we really need a big change. Right. And not to say that I don't think any of the feedback has been negative so far that we've heard from any of our um, interns. I think the only the only one thing that we've ever heard that was like, hey, we should have more meetings. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was like, you should have more meetings more often. And it was like, well, why didn't you ask the question? You have our email. But, you know, um, for me, <laughs> as you know, as like the den mother, mother for them. I've opened myself up to where, you know, I have the emails coming to my phone. I have, you know, my phone number is in, you know, in the email signature so that they have the opportunity to contact me at any time if they have a question. And not to say that, you know, I'm 24-7 available, but I've made it so that the first thing I do in the morning when I wake up, it's, it's there, you know, it's like, right. hey, so and so sent you an email. This is important. And if it's if it's for life changers, I'm like, yep, I gotta get to it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So now what would you what would be your number one tip for um and st sticking sticking with uh Rashia, what would be your number one tip for another nonprofit uh organization who is 
thinking of putting together, because I, I've spoken about internships before, but maybe I've missed something. So you just come in fresh, you know, out the box with your idea of what would make for a good internship. What make, if nothing else, make sure you do what? Um, I would say, if nothing else, make sure that you have somebody that is dedicated to taking Ooh. on this. Yes. Uh, part of the process because not only is it you know a lot of time away from Andy and everything else that you have to do it's also knowing you know what to basically like knowing how to answer the questions right. knowing how to talk to people um knowing when when to give the reply that you need to give at the right time Right. Just basically also making sure that you're available for people because if you don't have the ability to answer in a timely manner and you're not dedicated to it, you're right. not going to give, you know, the feedback that you need to these interns. You're not going to say, oh, well, this is great. You know, maybe we should change one thing or, you know, things like that. You're going to take your time with it. And some of this stuff needs to be done Right away. So if you're not dedicated to it and you don't have the, I guess, like the time and the the mental mm. to be able to just sit down yeah. and just, like, really pay attention, you're going to miss things. And for me, that's one of those things I make sure that I have the dedicated time, I have the dedicated space, um, and... I'm just make, I always make myself available whenever right. and wherever I can. Right. Well, I'm going to ask, and I thank you, and I, and I will say, yes, uh, Rashia is our communications organizer. So, um, there are things that she does behind the scenes that Sam and McKenzie don't see. Um, just as there are things that she does behind the scenes for our community service workers. Um, who she doesn't even know their name until I say, okay, they need a letter of completion <laughs> and, and send it over like, oh, okay. But she goes into Clockify and gets their report of their hours. And so, yes, you definitely need uh, someone who can dedicate, who is willing to learn because we didn't, neither one of us, we Clockify and, you know, yeah. we didn't know <laughs> about any of that. So it was a learning process. But again, um, when you're setting up, programs and and yes you need help but you have to be offering value it can't just be yes. oh i need your help this is what i need to do and period it has to be giving value and me just being the person i am um aside from being a life and business coach i'm going to make sure that someone come and leaves me better than they came and I yeah. told the ladies that. So now with that being said, I'm going to ask Mackenzie the same question. Um, and it doesn't have to be a reflection on us. It may not even be something that's, that would be relevant to life changers. But if, if you were speaking to another nonprofit founder or executive director, somebody, and they're like, well, you know, we're thinking about putting together an internship program. You've been through one. What would you suggest? What would you say, Mackenzie? Okay, if nothing else, make sure you do this or have this. Um, so two big things right off the bat. Number one is our weekly meetings. I do think those are really important because if you're like me, you're a um, kind of like a visual learner. So I can email you and you can explain something to me. But if I hear your voice saying it, I resonate it a lot more than I am when I read it. Um, that is the nice thing, though, is that you guys are always available over email. So if it is like late or if I can't call or something, then I can just email and you guys uh, get to me as soon as you can. But it is also nice to have a meeting um, and just check in with each other every week at least once, because um, having someone with their voice just explain to me how to do something makes me understand it a lot more than reading it on a screen. Um, but also because it's a lot faster if I have five, six seven questions instead of sending that many emails you can just answer it within that five minutes right um another big thing is that when we do our meetings or our emails or anything you guys always make it a point to check in with us 
not only through the internship, but personally as well. You guys say, hey, how has your week been going? Like, how are you doing? How is your family doing? And I think that's important just because um, it makes it your interns feel like they're not just there just for the work, just because you need something from us, just because Aww. we need something from you. It's more like um, you actually care about us as a human and you want to make sure that we're doing OK. Or if we're feeling sick. You guys give us recommendations or things <laughs> But for me, with you guys having kids who are older than mine, it's nice because you guys, um, I have a very, very small family, so I don't have a lot of friends my age who have children, so it's nice having you guys who can tell me about things to do with my children or just something like that, and that's a big thing with internships, too, as well. It's also should be about the work and what you're doing and what we're getting from it and all those things. It's also good because there's like a almost like a human side to it, you know, where you guys are just checking right, in on right. us and making sure that we're doing good too. And that is, I think, important with any internship because it makes it more, at least for me, it makes me feel more like, okay, I want to work for you guys. Like I want to, because you guys take the time to check in on me and to check in on Sam and make Aww. sure that we're doing it. So that makes it more, um, I'm more willing versus if I was working for someone that I didn't really know or didn't really relate to at all, if that makes sense. So those are my two big things with any internship that I think it's important to have. I, and I'll say this. I, I also, and it, that meeting goes both ways because I want to hear from you in your words, not just read your words, um, what you're working on, how it's going, what hurdles you're coming up against, how did, okay, you fix that, you got over that hurdle, how did you, I want to hear that from you. But also, um, because even when you do get out in the real world, uh, which I know you both already work there, but you know what I mean, um, uh, when you get in the school system, Sam, or when you get into, you know, you might go working for government, who knows, and um, you, it, presentation presentation is is a is a really big thing and and it's that you get that practice even though yes you know it, it what you're speaking of as far as the family that's the culture and i refuse to even entertain any other kind of culture period because i know i know i know i've been i've been in this workforce for over 40 years and i know the places where i thrived and didn't want to leave and even if i had to leave it was because it was more family than, uh, you know, I've worked in local government. I've worked in Fortune 100. I've worked in, you know, small mom and pop. And, but the, and funny enough, the g- local government was more family than the, than the mom and pop, you know, but it's all about what culture do you build? And we've been building culture from day one, you know. I don't look at uh, our community service workers as, you know, oh, you're an ex-con. Da, da, da. No, 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 dude, hey, this is what I need you to do. <laughs> it's not easy to do it. You know, you wouldn't know in our conversations if they're volunteer, internal work. But that's, you know, we're about people. We're about people. And, again, we're about getting you interns ready for that real world strong, not not. You know, there's going to be things you have to learn there, but as far as you having the confidence and the self-esteem and feeling empowered by, okay, yeah, 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 I, oh, I know this. I, oh, yeah, I've already come up against that problem. I know how to get over that hurdle. I know about that, you know, how to present that. So um, that's, you know, that's, uh, but yeah, the meeting, that goes a long ways, and, and that meeting is more than just, oh, what are you up to? And that's why it was funny when another intern said, well, I think we should have more meetings. <laughs> I was sitting there like, does she not know what my schedule <laughs> looks like <laughs> on a weekly thing? Like, no, honey, once a week is enough. Once a week is enough. But that was, that, that had me cracking up. Okay, Sam, you're up, doll. So if someone comes to you and says, you know, I'm, I, I started a nonprofit. I need some help. And um, I, I, someone mentioned something about an internship. And I, I'm not quite sure how to put it together, but I'm not, I, you know, what, what would I even offer them? What would you say, hey, if nothing else, you need to have this or you need to do this? Go for it. Um, a couple of things as well. I completely agree with Mackenzie about the having like a slight personal relationship. It is a lot more, um, I guess, yeah, like she said, like I'm a lot more willing to do things when I have that, like, I work for someone who's kind and, like, people who care about my well-being. It also shows, like, how you guys care for your company, like, why you're doing what you're doing, you know, Um, and I think that's really important. Um, 
it just shows like a very strong moral compass. And that's something for me personally that I want to be surrounded by even in the workplace, which is not always um, available, you know. So that's super nice to just like work for good people. Um, and yeah, I do feel like you guys care about what's going on with us, you know, like it. Yeah, y'all, it, y'all know it, I'm, I'm, I'm a softie, so yeah, okay, let's get off the niceties. <laughs> I'm, about, I'm about to start crying. Go ahead. <laughs> um, okay. The work side of it. Well, I feel like communication is the most important thing. I really appreciate how you guys check in, like, um, no more sappy stuff, but I know, I know, I know. Like, I'm, 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 I'm I get good. with like the, <laughs> what we're doing, like if we have questions, you know. And I do. This is like a small thing, but I really, really appreciate how often you say that there's no dumb questions because yeah. in an internship, like, and I'm assuming other people would feel this, no matter what inter- internship they're in, like it's new to them. There's some things that are confusing, some things you might not know about, and. I feel like it would be really intimidating to not be able to ask those questions like confidently, you know, so that's really, really helpful for me. It takes the pressure off as well. Like if I feel like I'm doing something wrong, you would always rather us just ask, you know, and then it's like, oh, okay, like I figured it out rather than like doing what you're thinking you're supposed to do, hoping for the best and then finding out you, (laughs) you know, Um, so I think the communication is huge for me, like. And also just being clear what the expectations are, you know, like when you let us know this is what I need you to do step by step, like that's super helpful. So I guess I I would just suggest to anyone um, who is starting an internship program that communication is like the biggest thing. Yeah, I'm 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 uh 40 years in customer and everything that I've done has always been customer service centered. And I am really big on customer service, so I am very big on communication. Mm-hmm. And one thing that I've always um I've always I've been a supervisor in management positions since I was a teenager in every position. And I've always been big on never letting anyone think that they had to guess. I'm very clear on what you need to do and I'm going to make sure I relay it to you. And that's why the first thing I kept saying was the only dumb question, but that's a principle. The only dumb question is the one you don't ask, you know, so please ask the questions because you're, I don't want you. (laughs) I don't want you spending your whole 10 hours this week doing it one way because, Oh, I thought that I, that irks me. That makes my skin crawl. Oh, well, I thought you said, "Mm -mm -mm." no, no, no. No, no, no. It would be one thing if you say, well, I know what you said, but I thought it would be more efficiently done this way. That, hey, I want you to think. But not with, oh, but I I thought you meant. No, 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 no. Don't think about it. I'm telling you, and if you're not clear, let's, you know, but that's a two-way thing. Because if, and that's why I want you to know how to present yourself and what you're doing, your tasks, and how you did. I know what you're doing, but I want you to present how you're doing it. I want you to to present the hurdles that you came across, and I want you to present how you got over those hurdles and, um, you know, the different ways you may have had. Hey, we all know, you know, there's a lot of ways to get things done, so you may not have been able to get over it. You may have had to go go around it or move just out the way. So uh, I think, yeah, communicate. I know communication is definitely first and foremost. And when I was making the program, designing it before we even had our first intern, it was uh, that meeting was first and that was number one. Okay, when are we going to have our meetings? We're going to have them on Mondays. Okay. Um, I just think Monday, and Rashid just asked me today, are we keeping them on Tuesdays? Or are we going to go back to Mondays after, you know, uh, just to date this episode, listeners, um, this is the last Tuesday of 2022 and so this will air on the first wednesday of 2023 setting it off with girl power that's what i'm talking about stay lit stay lit so um yeah communication is awesome the best one of the best things that you guys have done for at least for me is When you're teaching me how to do something, you guys have sent me um, YouTube videos of the screen recording of you doing it yourself. And that, to me, is big just because, I mean, I'm in my 20s, so I am pretty tech savvy. But um, a lot of people don't like to volunteer online because they're not tech savvy. And so being able to have that YouTube video of you guys showing us exactly um, 
like a screen recording of your computer and showing us exactly how to do something right. is very yeah. nice because it helps me to like learn these websites that we're using um way faster way easier way better um but even like if it was like somebody like my grandparents or something like they'd be able to learn that too just because it's right in front of their face where you guys are showing them so instead of just leaving us out for our our own trying to figure it out you guys have (laughs) went in and made those videos for us and been like hey this is how you're going to do it um when you start to do it and then now I, i watched the video once and now i know what i'm doing um so that's definitely been something that I've never had done for me before, like in any other um, any other place that I volunteered or even with my schoolwork or anything. No one has ever went out of their way to send me that screen recording. And that is something that I think all especially the volunteers um, or internships over the Internet should have just because it it is so much easier and so much more self-explanatory. And then I have those videos to fall back on if I do forget something. Um, So that's really nice. And that's just something I wanted to mention in here because that's one of the best things that I have come across on here. So well, far. I'm glad you appreciate that. And, and to, to all of those listening who are, um, it's because our audience is new and new nonprofits or community organizations or struggling who have may, may have been in business, you know, 13 years and just kind of hit a plateau. And a lot of it is because of technology. Um, not being able to stay up with it. But um, the one thing is, if you have a question, the same, and it goes back to that, no such thing as a dumb question, um, ask the question because in a class there's more than likely somebody else who has that same question, right? Well, if you're asking how to do this, there's more than likely going to be somebody else. So that's why on the Life Changers uh, YouTube channel, we have a playlist of training videos for our team. So a lot of those things, the next, you know, team of interns comes in and they ask that same thing. Hey, hold on a minute. <laughs> Here's a link. <laughs> there you go. So, yeah, I, I appreciate. And, that, you know, uh, that communication, we can go on. That, we have a whole podcast in the beginning. That was one of the first things I had to talk about. But um, it is uh, so important both ways in, in this internship program that you – let us know what it is you need, what it is you're lacking, what it is you have a question about, um, what what ideas you have, what input and um, feedback that, um, you know, you'd like to share because we're not the end all be all. Yeah, we're the final say. We're, we're board members. Um, but we're, yeah, we're the final say. But for one, our average client is going to be your age. Okay. Um, coming out of incarceration. And uh, even though you guys don't have records, and if you don't, I don't even want to know. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. But um, there's just another level of thinking, you know. So, uh, but, yeah, that's why it, it, we're all in it together, and it's all for one main goal, and that is to serve and and serve as best as we possibly can. And so we have coming up very soon, for Mackenzie, I know, um, we have midterm surveys. And I know I had said it the other day, interviews. Oh, no, Rashida was like, no, we don't do it. Okay, I'm sorry. We don't do it. Not that it will never happen, but no, right now we just do midterm surveys. So, Miss Rashia, would you mind uh, just sharing with our listeners who are thinking about putting together an internship program um, why we do midterm surveys and what they should be looking for, please? So... We do midterm surveys. We do also exit interviews and exit surveys. Um, the reason that we do this is because we want to make sure that we, as not just, you know, people who are, you know, coordinating a program, but also as a program in general, like the whole thing are not only gearing our assignments towards the right things, but also as a feedback for us, as in, you know, are we asking too much? Are we asking too little? Um, is the time that we're requiring, um, you know, enough? Is the, um, you know, is the program helping in any way for the, for the people who are interning with us? Um, it also gives them a chance to give us extra feedback as far as, you know, is there anything that they would like to see 
in, you know, the program um, thus far. You know, in the middle, it kind of is still new, but you're kind of settling settling in, so to say. Right, where you're, right. You're, you're kind of used to the things that you're being asked or that are being asked of you. So you have a gist of what you're doing. You You have an idea of, you know, how to schedule your time. So it gives you an op- like it gives the interns an opportunity to tell us, hey, look, like this isn't working well, or right. yeah, I I love this, and this right. is you should keep doing this. But I feel that maybe we should integrate something else. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And it, it's and you know what you can't. And I talked about this a couple of episodes ago. Um, you can't tweak what you don't track. Absolutely. So and that doesn't just go for increasing our visits to the website, which is increasing. Yay! Shout out to Ariane. <laughs> Who's doing a bang up job on our Google ads. I um she was I interviewed her a couple of weeks ago um on the podcast. But um and and that goes not just for online marketing, you know, SEO, SEM and all that good stuff, but it goes for humans. You know, we need to know again from you, um even though we do, it's a wide open window every week, you have the chance to say it. Um, but with the midterm survey, it's kind of like our meetings or our quiz that lead up to the test. Or, mm-hmm. or in this case, like the, t- the, the quizzes that lead up to the midterm. And then you'll have more quizzes that lead up to the test. So, um, and it's a test both, both ways. Because like Rashia said, by now you're settled in, but you're also more comfortable knowing that you can come to us, knowing that if you're really, if you're given an an assignment and said, okay, well, this is how you do it. I'm wide open for, you know, and that feedback input. Um, Do you see it? Do you know of another way? Maybe, you know, another free app that would get the job done better. They're coming out what every day. So um, it's a, it's a two way street. And I, and I um, really appreciate that. Um, So now I would like uh I would like to do something interesting and this is all unscripted. <laughs> so it makes for interesting uh topics. Um so ladies, I would like to ask and you have um let's say 3 minutes to answer. If you could start a nonprofit and had all the help and all the funding you needed, what would you do let's start with sam wait like i have three minutes to think about it you have three minutes to answer it think on the the spot on the spot Um, on the spot on the spot i don't know i have mine if you want me to go that go ahead and bail your best friend out see that's teamwork okay (laughs) okay Um, Mackenzie. what would you do for me i've actually put a lot of thought into this before i don't not sure why but i have um for me personally, since I'm like really interested in the intersection of psychology and criminal justice, um, I think Erica and I have talked a little bit about how um, there needs to be more um, kind of just like mental health wellness checks on not only inmates, but people returning into society, because that's such a culture shock, like culture shock. You'll be in, in prison for 10, 15, 20 years, and then you come back and you're seeing people all the time and people are in your personal space and you're not used to that. Um, right. So for me, I would focus more on the psychology side of it and checking in on their mental health and kind of being like a resource specifically for that. Like, um, cause I know that we offer resources through our, um, life changers website. But for my nonprofit, if I had all the funding in the world, I would um, for well first finish getting my degree specifically in forensic psychology um, because I do like the, I want to study specifically like I guess you can say quote unquote like the criminal mind, but also not to like part of it is because I want to understand it, but also the other part is because I think that there are ways to help people that we just aren't um, seeing because I think that. A lot of the time in this world, you do a crime and people are like, well, I'll go to prison. Bye. Like, and they're right. trying to get rid of it. Right. They're trying right. to um, eliminate the, the threat almost. And so um, for me personally, I would like to do a nonprofit that 
would kind of check in on people and focus more on like their mental health because at the end of the day we're all human and we all are suffering with I don't I'm a firm believer that everyone in this world has um I guess you could say a mental disorder of some sort um no matter who you are and which I don't even like the word disorder but that's with lack of better words um but I think that everyone is suffering from something, even if you don't mention it. And that doesn't matter if you have a clean past or a dirty past. Um, at the end of the day, you still need that help from other people. And that's what we were put on this earth to do is kind of be a light for others. And we can't do that unless we're checking in on our brothers and sisters, if that makes sense. Um, so for me, that's what my nonprofit would focus on, just because, for one, it's something that's interested me. And for two, um, it's something that I firmly believe in. That is, uh, and that's why I say you may wind up going government, not necessarily working in or for the government, um, but maybe contracting to the government because that's certainly something that um, prisons, you know, need. Prisons, halfway houses, whatever it is. So that's, yeah. Well, I told you, when you're ready, let me know. I'm here to help, you know, get that started off the ground. Um, yeah, I because I know you do want to start some kind of business after after your master's. Yeah, right. I do. Yep. OK. <laughs> um, OK, Sam, you cheater. <laughs> well, now I wish I went first because you explained that really well, Mackenzie. Um, <laughs> I feel like mine is kind of unrelated to life changers. But I think mine would have more to do with, like, um, probably substance abuse in teenagers. Um, That's something I feel really strongly about. And before deciding I was going to do school psychology, I was going to go into substance abuse um, counseling. And I don't know. I just think that, I mean, obviously, there are a lot of families who um, they are raised in an environment like that and a lot of teenagers like get into things like that because of how they're raised you know yeah and it's like obviously when you're an adult it is um kind of your responsibility to help yourself but as a teenager like a kid it's like what are you supposed to do you know like the people that are supposed to be taking care of you are either in that themselves or like have put you in some sort of position that has led you to that you know So, obviously, I don't know, like, the logistics of how it would be at all, but I think it would probably focus on um, getting help for those teenagers, like, specifically adolescents, Um, because I think every age, like, needs help with that, but I have a big heart for that age, which, I mean, is why I'm going into school psychology, but I think that's, like, a big thing that... um, I think it's discussed as, like, young adults a lot. It's um, a lot of young adults are in, like, rehab and that sort of age, but I don't feel like teenagers are necessarily given the help they need. And, honestly, I feel like they should be given more help than anyone. Like, obviously, everyone needs it, but they didn't even put themselves there, you know? Like, it's like they're just born into that, and that, like, breaks my heart, honestly. So I think I would do something regarding... um giving them like the resources and services that they need to get out of that and to change their life around while they're still that young, you know? Yeah, that's, that, that's definitely, um, I'll tell you what, that's job security. Because that, unfortunately that's um, like in my case, uh, and not just my case, this is not unique, unfortunately, but um, in my case, uh, substance abuse is what is, what took my father incarcerated him from the time I was six to six, uh, 16. And, um, and at 12, uh, drugs entered my life as far as, uh, you know, smoking weed and, and drinking and, and, you know, all that that you do in the drug scene. So, um, but, and, and I didn't have those, um, a resource like that. And it's, it is very important. It's um, definitely needed, but not readily available. I mean, you have those kids who, you know, their kids have, their parents have uh, psychologists on speed dial, just like they have lawyers on speed dial. And, and I didn't come from that kind of family. So um, I came up in an era and in a family where weed was okay, you know, and um, uh, drinking was okay. And it was 
even though it was something that as a kid you're not supposed to do and because you're not grown and blah 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 but you kid you know but you're a kid watching everybody else smoke you know so i started smoking weed started smoking cigarettes started drinking at 12 12 was a pivotal year for me and um thank god after 37 years i i was delivered from cigarette smoking i quit weed a long time ago but it's that both of those um because i've also been um i could have been one of your clients in you know uh the criminal mind set as well mckenzie but you two definitely child criminology psychology youth you know all of that get to the root get to the root and unfortunately when you're dealing with the kids right you're dealing with adults uh after they've been exposed all these years and then you're dealing with the, you know their kid trying to get to prevent them but then it shoots back up to the adults you know it's 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 bananas it, it's just like a, this tangled well web we weave as an, as a society so you guys yeah you two might need to think about going in together so okay last but definitely not least rashia because i know <laughs> You're actually the reason why I asked this because Rashia, a few uh, when we interviewed Rashia, Rashia made a comment. Correct me if I'm wrong. She said, "Oh, I love working with a nonprofit, but I would never start one." <laughs> so now, what kind of nonprofit would you start if funding and resources were not an op- were not an obstacle? Now that I've had time to think about it. Um, you're a mega cheater. <laughs> in all honesty, I would start a nonprofit for people who have gone through the foster care system. Mm. Um, personally, I have been through the foster care system. I was put into foster care at the age of six, and I was very, very lucky to have been adopted by the family that was my first foster family. Um, not everybody is that lucky. Right. Um, and just because I was adopted by that family does not mean that things did not happen in that family. Um, you know, pers- having personal experience going through that and having friends and pe- having met people, you know, throughout my life that have also been adopted, who've gone through that system, you know, our, um, my next door neighbors were also a foster family. Oh, wow. So I know the goods and bads. Um, My biological siblings have gone through not only the foster care system, but they also went through the group home system Mm. side of, you know, of family services. So I would open up a, a nonprofit for people who are in that situation where, you know, either they're going through the family services or they're having, they're having, well, I would say going through currently or where they're on the verge of going through. Because I feel that those people need the resources that family services does not provide. Right. There's a lot of things that, could help, you know, as far as, like you said, you know, if funding was readily available, if there was, like, no barriers whatsoever, um, it would it would be great for people to be able to have, you know, the housing, whether it's the housing or the counseling or the, you know, the help with getting jobs, transportation, you know, any of it. Because a lot of those things are the reason that people – like, you know, young kids go to foster care. Right. It's not just, oh, well, I don't want to have my child anymore. Um, in my personal situation, my mother was a recovering drug addict. She couldn't, you know, she couldn't provide for myself, my brother. And then we had a younger sister as well who was a newborn baby. So I was six years old. My brother was three and a newborn little sister And, you know, she needed that help, but because she wasn't, you know, physically and mentally in the right space, 
she wasn't able to get that help. Right. And so not only is it's like, you know, the substance abuse, but it was also mental health for her. Right. And then, you know, when we were taken from her, we were put into a foster care home. And for us, the things that we were going through in the foster care home were foreign to us. Mm. It was to the point, you know, like I said, I was six and my brother was three. So my little brother, for the first probably six months of us being in this foster care home, would not talk to anybody but me. Wow. When they asked him what he wanted to eat or what he wanted to do, he would whisper it to me and then I have to tell them. Wow. So it's, you know, not just the adjustment, but also for for the kids, but it's also, you know, traumatizing for the parents as well. Um, so I feel like that would probably be where my heart and my mind is. It's, it's a, a big, it's, it's hard to explain. Like it's a big web of things that, that would include because it would be not only, you know, the substance abuse help, but it would also be the mental health help, the yep. transportation, the, you know, the funds for housing, for any, you know, yes. any of the things that the government can help with, but they don't give out as much as we need. No. And so, we're, we're not going there. <laughs> we're, yeah. That's a whole other episode. <laughs> we are not going there. Why doesn't the government release the money? Let's leave it right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, they are, you got, you, all three of you may wind up going into some kind of, you know, business or being an extension of life changers. Hey, you never do know. We will be, uh, uh, according to Rashi over there, I said it, but I, I thought it and felt it, but she actually said global. So um, not just the podcast, but life changers changing, you know, working on prison reform around, around the world, um, so which sounds, sounds like a plan to me. Uh, so I thank you, ladies. We are, um, we are at the end of our time together. I appreciate each and every one of you. And I will say this. This is, this is one of my favorite sayings. Uh, from the movie The Long Kiss Goodnight with Gina Davis. I don't know if y'all old enough to know that. <laughs> but um, uh, Gina Davis's boyfriend in the movie was toasting at a little get-together. I think it was for Christmas. And he said, may the best of your past be the worst of your future. And that has stuck with me ever since about 10, 15 years later. So um, I thank you, Mackenzie, Sam, Rashia, family, listeners. If you would like to be a guest on a future episode, I invite you to visit our website, thecnnpodcast.com. Um, click the Be a Guest tab. If you would like to advertise, again, visit the website and click the Advertise tab. And um, I urge you to please like, share, and subscribe to our podcast. Please visit us on our YouTube channel and subscribe to that if that is your uh, preferred method of consuming content. And these um, likes and shares help us to be motivated to continue to show up and show out for you to help you grow your nonprofit. Uh, to be a blessing, to reach, and to work with those who are waiting for whatever it is you are hiding inside, and we want to help you bring it out to the masses. So as always, until next time, be awesome and be blessed.